like in many other fields artificial intelligence and machine learning have a very important role to play in the field of media and communication as well so uh, in today's presentation we'll be looking at how various newsrooms across the world have uh, adopted some of these ai applications what are the pitfalls of these applications what are the changing roles of journalists and what actually is artificial intelligence and machine learning so in the next few slides we'll first talk about what is machine learning so uh, unlike uh, science fiction machine learning is not about machines having a brain made out of metal it is not an artificial brain that uh, machines are being provided it's about uh, training those machines to performing a single specific task according to a specified measure that that the user, user has defined so basically we are training the machine into certain algorithm to predict and perform certain tasks and we'll explain uh, what these tasks are and uh, how that training uh, goes off so before we uh, begin uh, discussing about uh, the machine learning applications uh, this is a very recent survey about uh, what journalists feel are the most enabling technologies for journalism and uh, uh, no surprises uh, uh, almost 7 out of 10 journalists they feel that artificial intelligence is is going to play a very important role in in the, in, in future journalism and of course uh, other technologies as uh, 5g and uh, there are uh, new devices also but artificial intelligence for a number of years have been the the most uh, uh, important uh, technology that journalists have been discussing uh, so uh, let's talk about how uh, ai has been used across the world in in many of these uh, 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 you know newsrooms so the peruvian uh, news outlet uh, ojo publico for example has a tool which can spot potential patterns of corruption in government procure, uh, procurement contract so whenever they have these con uh, uh, contract document they uh, pass it through their their uh, uh, algorithm and they try and look for any pattern of corruption there the bbc of course has uh, been testing that uh, artificial intelligence powered chatbot to answer questions about coronavirus using their own reporting uh, 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 resources and uh, summaries from official sources so this again is a very useful resource uh, where uh, all the answers are are provided based on uh, some uh, very uh, 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 authentic evidence uh, the south china morning post is also using artificial intelligence to identify look alike audiences so that when, uh, when they want to target uh, new subscribers those new subscribers will be very similar to the subscribers they already have so that's where artificial intelligence also has a very important role to perform and of course the reuters news agency has used this uh, speed uh, speech to text technology to add time coded transcripts to their archives of videos so uh, that makes the videos much more searchable and much more uh, easier to find uh, the key moments or anything that that the researcher or the communicator wants to find out from from the huge resource uh, video resource uh, beginning from 1896 so as we said in the beginning uh, artificial intelligence makes it possible for machines to learn from experience so uh, we uh, provide uh, data sets to machines and the more data points we pro uh, provide to the machines the better they become uh, uh, at at predicting and uh, performing certain tasks so it makes machines to learn from experience and we'll find out how how uh, that that experience is reinforced and all but they generally uh, uh, two of the things they rely on is is uh, deep learning and uh, natural language processing and we'll see how natural language processing and natural uh, language generation has a very important role to play in in everyday journalism so uh, using uh, some of these techniques of deep learning and natural language processing uh, computers can be trained to uh, accomplish specific tasks so we provide them with large amount of data and they can look for pattern uh, in that data in a matter of few seconds so we train uh, these uh, machines uh, for certain tasks and that's a very important thing so machine learning is a branch of uh, artificial intelligence that learns from experience as we said and this learning can uh, take many forms it can range uh, learning from uh, example learning by analogy and at times it can be autonomous learning but the important thing is that we are training the machine with with uh, millions of uh, data points if possible and the, uh, and when when the machine uh, is fed with uh, newer data it can look for the patterns it it, it has been uh, trained to recognize so we first of all make the machine 
aware of what these patterns are and then the machine will be able to look for those patterns when we give them a fresh data set so so uh, at, at, at its very basis this is what machine learning is so it's about learning uh, some properties of a data set and applying them to new data and for that the common practice in machine learning is to split the machine learning into uh, data into two sets so if if we if we for example if we provide them with 100000 data points then we split that into two uh, different sets 50000 each the first is the training set on which we uh, uh, make uh, the machine learn those data properties so for example we could be feeding them with with thousands and thousands of images and telling them that what those images are for example we could be feeding them with images of of different vehicles and uh, train the machine to recognize bicycles for example and after we have trained the machine onto those training sets we then provide a testing set on which we uh, uh, ask the machine to recognize those bicycles for example and based on the machine performance we can streamline or we can you know add, add further data or, or, or fine tune it to recognize uh, bicycles for example when we feed them with, with uh, thousands and thousands of photographs at a later uh, point of time so machine learning in, in this sense is, uh, is uh, 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 telling the machine to recognize uh, uh, these patterns or these pictures and then whenever we provide them with a new kind of a picture the machine will be able to uh, 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 find that out and predict that okay this is what uh, uh, this this uh, image has or it can just by in a matter of seconds it can tell us that okay there is a bicycle in this uh, uh, photograph so uh, there are three different processes of machine learning the first is the supervised learning where uh, along with the training input we also uh, tell them what these classifications are so we tell the machine that okay this is positive and this is negative and this is neutral so this is a supervised learning where we are telling the machine that these are the categories or, or these are the categories that that we are training you to so uh, if i if i uh, give them a particular word and tell them that this, this is positive later on it will be expected to recognize similar words as positive or, or similar words as neutral if, if we train them as, as, as neutral words so uh, this is known as supervised learning where we provide the machines with the categories and later on the machine can find out those categories from uh, a, a larger data set uh, the other kind of uh, machine learning process is this unsupervised learning so uh, unlike in supervised learning we provide no labels to the learning algorithm we uh, let the machine find out the patterns and then you know we might give those patterns or those categories certain names but the machine itself finds out those patterns and we do not give uh, uh, categories or we not uh, we, or we do not train the machine into uh, the categories that uh, we have identified before so we let the machine identify those hidden patterns or uh, it, it can uh, 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 look look for those categories uh, by itself The other point is the uh, reinforcement where uh, the computer program interacts with a dynamic environment. So it must perform a certain goal. So it could be like uh, driving a vehicle or it could be playing a game against an opponent or it could be playing a, a chess game, for example. And uh, as it uh, uh, learns or as it interacts with that dynamic environment, the environment which keeps changing, the program is provided feedback in terms of rewards and punishment. So if it does a right thing, it is it is rewarded rewarded if it does a wrong thing it, it is it is uh, uh, given given a negative feedback and when uh, uh, based on these feedbacks the machine reinforces or it uh, knows that uh, what needs to be done so this is uh, what is reinforcement learning so machine learning is is generally of these three types the the, the supervised learning the unsupervised learning and the uh, reinforcement So for the uh, impact of artificial intelligence on newsrooms, I have drawn on this book by uh, Francisco Marconi. This is a very useful book which talks about artificial intelligence and future of journalism. So generally, the traditional journalism model is, is a, a linear model where the news gathering, the production and the distribution process it takes in a linear fashion. But uh, when we use algorithms, then you know it, it, it could be a circular pattern or, or it, it's, a, it's a lot more dynamic. So uh, there are different ways in which artificial intelligence works in these three different processes. So we'll see that in the news gathering processes, we can use algorithms to mine data from, from the social media, for example. 
and also mine data using our uh, AI sensors. In, in uh, the production part, there are uh, uh, different ways in which we can uh, uh, write stories or construct stories from data using uh, these uh, machine learning applications. And uh, even the distribution of content uh, uh, can, can, can be uh, helped in a big way by using these AI applications. So in the next few slides, we are going to talk about these processes of news production, news gathering and distribution and how AI can help us in that or uh, does help in that. So uh, one of the first instances of automated news was uh, from, from Los Angeles time in, in uh, times in March 17, 2014, where there was a 4.7 magnitude earthquake in Los Angeles. And within three minutes of, of the uh, earthquake subsiding, the first news accounts appeared on the website of Los Angeles Times. So based on data that was fed into these uh, AI programs, the uh, uh, program could construct a news story out of that. So uh, that is one area where uh, certain kind of news stories can be constructed with the help of AI applications. So uh, the uh, machine learning process which helps us or the AI process which helps uh, us, us uh, with, with uh, uh, writing news stories is, is, a, is a subset of the natural language uh, processing. So as we know, natural language processing is, is, a, a, is, is, is a, an application used to help computers understand the human's natural language. So one of the objectives of NLP is uh, for computers to read, decipher, understand and make sense of the human language. And we'll see that it's not only just understanding and deciphering human language, but also constructing words out of data uh, with, with their knowledge of uh, how, how humans uh, interact or how humans communicate. So uh, the uh, traditional uses of NLP are, are uh, things that uh, we all are aware of or we might have seen in our uh, everyday usage. So we have these uh, uh, language translation applications as, as in Google Translate. We have these uh, processes like uh, uh, Microsoft Word or even Grammarly which ch checks the grammatical accuracy of text and that's where AI applications are used. Even in IVR applications, interactive voice responses, uh, the ones which we use to call uh, call centers. So it's based on uh, AI applications and based on, on, on uh, this speech to text recognition. It recognizes our, our tone and our, our, our voice and our diction and tries to uh, help us with that. And a lot of these personal assistant applications like Siri, like Alexa, like Cortana, they use uh, uh, natural language processing in a big way. So these are the uh, 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 applications that we already see in our everyday life. Uh, in, in the newsroom, uh, uh, the NLP can help us to scan huge documents. So when, when we have uh, lots and lots of papers or pictures or, or documents and we want to find out uh, certain kinds of words or we want to find out whether there is a pattern or whether there is some wrongdoing somewhere. So uh, uh, the AI driven, uh, the uh, uh, artificial intelligence can create summaries by ranking the relevance of phrases and whether they uh, uh, connect with each other or whether they appear with each other and so many other other uh, analyses that can be drawn from there. So a uh, lot of critical information can be gathered from these big documents just by using uh, artificial intelligence applications. And uh, one of the subset of NLP is the natural language generation and it's the process of uh, producing meaningful phrases and sentences in the form of natural languages. So it, it basically uh, the input could be just structured data, maybe in form of tables or uh, in the uh, earthquake example, as we just saw. So uh, we just provide them with data and they can bring out with uh, tailor made content in a matter of seconds, thousands of pages in, in a matter of second. And, and, uh, that would be uh, uh, some, somewhat like a human-like uh, communication. And we'll see that readers are uh, 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 not even aware of uh, the fact that they might be reading uh, some content produced by an AI program. So it's, it's uh, so much precise. So this uh, natural language generation is, is, uh, has reached that level of precision where uh, the, the language is very similar to what humans would write with, with uh, a number of other advantages. So, uh, NLG, as we saw, the natural language generation is just a subset of the larger uh, natural language processing. And there's also this concept of natural language understanding. So these processes are used in the newsrooms to generate stories out of data. And we'll see some of these applications in the next few slides. 
so one of these commercial uh, NLG applications is this area and this is uh, from their website it, it uh, says that it's a form of artificial intelligence that transforms structured data into natural language so, so through this uh, knowledge automation language generation it can provide tailor uh, made uh, uh, content and this tailor made means that uh, it can be from the perspective of, of both teams so say for example if there is a sporting event and there are there are uh, two teams there and there are supporters of the, these two teams who obviously uh, uh, don't agree on on, on, on uh, many things so we might have content tailor made for these two different kinds of supporters and also it, it, it can change in, in terms of many any, any other template that we might want to provide them and it can be done in, in, on a massive scale and in a matter of seconds so it's just the matter of creating a template and providing the structured data and letting the algorithm uh, uh, work out it's the magic of creating stories or creating a text that makes sense and a text that is tailor made for for the audience and for the time of day and something that can be updated also so uh, one of the things is uh, uh, narr narrativa that is also an ai application so it uses natural language generation and it can write uh, uh, you know more than 10 matches on a single day in just a matter of seconds so the journalist's uh, task of, of repetitive uh, 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 writing is is, is 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 taken care of so the journalist doesn't have to focus on the uh, main stories because they are generated just from the data that are provided to the uh, uh, AI, ai application and it uh, frees up the journalist to focus on analysis so uh, it's not that journalists are becoming redundant, but it's the fact that the journalistic work is, is freed up from, from these repetitive tasks into more analytical tasks or into more, uh, uh, you know, soft stories or, or human interest kind of tasks. Uh, this is uh, what, what uh, this is again from, from uh, Narrativa's uh, uh, web page. And uh, this is where they talk about uh, th this was created in 2015. Uh, and they've been generating automatic content uh, from, from any field. It could be from the field of economy, from the field of health, from the field of science, from the field of sport. So we just need to know the uh, 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 template that, that, that has to be created and we just uh, have to provide the right kind of data to the uh, 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 AI application and it can uh, create up those kind of stories uh, in, in a matter of seconds, as I said. Also, AI can help us with very many different kinds of storytelling. So it's not just one kind of storytelling, but the same data can be used to provide uh, uh, these uh, 12 different kinds of stories uh, at the same time. So you could be getting uh, photo galleries or you could be having timelines or you could be having short videos or you could be having VR or AR stories out of that or, or uh, uh, newsletters or even chatbots as, as we saw uh, some time back. It could be a uh, long form story it could be listicles or it could be uh, visualized data or data visualizations it could be an audio uh, uh, experience and uh, there, there could be explorable stories and even alerts and notifications so the same data can be used in multiple ways without much of an effort so the the simple information can be uh, 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 you know provided to the consumers at at, at, at a very swift rate into very many different formats and even tailor made according to their own requirements according to what they would want to read or what do they would want to see so this is a very important uh, uh, thing about uh, uh, ai applications that this can uh, tailor made content uh, or create content according to the readers varying personalities and uh, according to the location the time of the day and and uh, uh, so many other uh, uh, conditions there uh, BBC is already uh, working on, on uh, turning text into visual uh, stories uh, suitable for mobile phones with pull quotes and animations. So again, the same thing, providing data and uh, harnessing technology for, for uh, uh, providing a, 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 a format of a story which uh, the uh, end uh, news consumer finds very relevant. And you can also provide uh, uh, you know summary of those news items and, and maybe even uh, audio versions of their stories using uh, those uh, synthetic voices so there are many other uses of artificial intelligence as well so using uh, new sensors for example uh, 
uh, rather than relying on on government figures about how many people turned up in a in a meeting for example it can uh, provide you with, with a with a more precise uh, uh, head count at a particular meeting it can uh, uh, scam, uh, scam, uh, skim through photographs and, and provide you with uh, 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 the kind of people you're looking for or uh, it can even uh, provide us with causal links and correlations within data but as I keep emphasizing the humans will always be needed they will not be redundant because the task of uh, a human journalist will be uh, much more different than, than uh, it, is, it, it is in a non-AI environment and uh, as I said, uh, this is a very important uh, finding uh, by uh, Christopher Clerval in uh, 2014. This was published in uh, uh, Journalism Practice. And it was found that the news audience could not distinguish between automated journalism and human journalism. And that is uh, what drives uh, some of these AI applications because they know that the consumers would not be able to uh, distinguish whether it has been written by a human being or whether it has been created out of an uh, artificial intelligence program. And as I uh, said before, it's, it's just another tool in the journalist armory. And unlike uh, in many places where, where uh, people have been thinking, even in the past, when, whenever you know, if, even when computers came, a lot of people thought that uh, uh, journalists will be out of work. Or, or if, we, if we travel back a few centuries, it was thought that uh, even printing machines would make people lazier. But uh, we've seen that uh, uh, it's just a change of culture. It's a change of uh, how we use that technology into our everyday work. So uh, jobs that involve creativity and the jobs that uh, involve ideation or even empathy, they will not be automated. For them, we will always require uh, 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 a human uh, um, uh, uh, creative mind there. So artificial intelligence just accelerates the process of collecting and contextualizing data. So it provides the right context to the data and it can very swiftly collect that data as well. So now we are going to talk about how uh, AI can help in the process of news gathering. Even in the news gathering process, AI applications are extremely useful. So uh, there is this uh, news tracer uh, at Reuters and it finds events that are breaking on Twitter uh, in a matter of seconds. So it, it is scanning uh, all, all, all the Twitter timelines and whenever there's an event breaking on Twitter, it can trace that uh, event and it even assigns them a newsworthiness score and also gives them a confidence score about how likely it is that those events are true. So instead of journalists uh, scouting for information manually, it is this uh, application which uh, uh, helps journalists uh, 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 save those precious seconds uh, in, in uh, uh, reporting uh, the event very quickly. So it's, it's about uh, scanning, uh, scanning the social media environment to find out newsworthy events, giving them a newsworthiness score and also a confidence score. But it has been found out that this news uh, tracer is very good at uh, finding out only certain kinds of events quicker than uh, uh, the mainstream news organizations. So uh, there are a lot of these applications. This is uh, from Graphix and it, it can take, uh, as it says, uh, it, it uh, helps us develop, test and validate the, the, the hypothesis in matter of minutes. So we'll be talking about many such applications. The other is the data miner, which, which uh, uh, helps newsrooms mine data, data uh, you know, from, from uh, 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 from from uh, various sources. So whenever there is a breaking news, uh, and data miner, as they say on their website, is used by 650 newsrooms around the world, 24/7, uh, to provide uh, earliest tips on breaking news and breaking events. Uh, then there is Factiva, which which uh, does does a very uh, similar kind of thing. And uh, uh, there, 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 are, uh, there is this ICIJ, which has its uh, custom-built uh, search engine to, to pour over millions of, of uh, documents and to uh, classify them and find out patterns in them and to look for stories in them. So as we see that uh, the, this machine learning uh, algorithms are, are revolutionizing the news gathering process as well, both in terms of speed and in terms of the huge volume they can uh, handle to... to predict and provide insights into stories.
so it's not just the uh, news gathering process but also the distribution process and this is one uh, study done by native and they found out that uh, uh, a lot of uh, these uh, uh, distribution processes that that Buzz, BuzzFeed uses. So it's not only just the social media account and uh, not just their own own website, but there are lots and lots of distribution channels that they can find out uh, through these uh, 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 artificial intelligence uh, uh, applications. And uh, these applications help a news organization find out uh, where uh, the, the, the possible uh, news consumers could be. Uh, media cloud again is a, a very important open source pl platform for studying the media ecosystem so it can allow uh, researchers to track how the stories and ideas spread through the media so it helps us uh, understand how you know when, when a story is, 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 is out, out in the uh, uh, news environment how it, it uh, finally spreads through the various media and how people are interacting with those uh, things as well so as we can understand there's a a lot more te technological help for journalists not only in in uh, uh, you know uh, finding out where the stories are or uh, writing the stories but also the impact of the stories also there's another uh, 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 this application which is known as true anthem based in san francisco california where they use artificial intelligence to pro, uh, identify the right content for the social audiences and post it to them at the right time so identifying who are our, 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 our potential consumers as i said in the distribution part also uh, artificial intelligence has a very important role to play in identifying who your potential consumers could be uh, there's this uh, uh, application, uh, News Whip, which uh, again tracks the impact of millions of stories and it empowers the uh, news and communications professionals. So it, it tells us uh, about the impact of the uh, 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 news story within a matter of seconds and predict uh, whether, whether uh, uh, you know, it, it will have an impact for a certain kind of audience also. So uh, as we talk about the positives of uh, artificial intelligence, very important to understand the uh, uh, question of ethics there and the question of responsibility. Because uh, if we treat uh, artificial intelligence as just a black box where certain kinds of information goes in and, and, and we get out certain information out of that, then uh, th there will be a problem. So uh, there's this uh, question of transparency and the explainability of algorithms, explaining people how a certain algorithm was built up and what kind of training data was used there and what are the uh, uh, methodological issues involved there what are the questions of uh, uh, you know algorithmic errors or bias so all these things have to be disclosed to the end user or or to the uh, uh, larger uh, academic and the communication fraternity so uh, there are uh, many things uh, or many kinds of uh, jobs that that will will come up with with the uh, new applications and one of them is uh, that of automation editors so as we've discussed about uh, these uh, uh, natural language generation it's important to create uh, certain kinds of templates so uh, these automation editors would write these templates and even think about the branches or the possible variation in terms of uh, audience and in terms of location in terms of uh, time and all that so that template has to be humanly decided by these automation editors. They would create these templates and then use the uh, uh, AI applications to create content. But this template has to be a, a, dy a dynamic process and it has to be done, 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 done by a human. And after those stories are generated, if there is any additional information required or, or if there is a, any additional explanation required, that also has to be done by the automation editors. So although the AI applications speed up the machine learning, uh, speed up the uh, news creation process, uh, there are a lot of things that uh, journalists will still have to do. Also, uh, there will be a, a, a new class of data journalists whose job would be to uh, run sophisticated analysis on, on, on uh, available data using uh, all, all the uh, uh, traditional uh, means of data science and to collaborate with reporters who have domain expertise in a specific area of coverage to make sense of that kind of data so these kind of uh, data journalists and uh, uh, local reporter teams will will become uh, even even more common in days to come 
Uh, as we said, uh, these ethical, ethical questions are extremely important and uh, uh, Cathy O'Neill so, so uh, brilliantly summarized it by suggesting that algorithms are opinions embedded in code. So as we saw at the beginning that when we are talking of algorithms, we are talking of training machine learning programs uh, using human coders uh, to, to identify certain patterns or we even tell them that what those patterns mean. So there is always an element of opinion involved in these algorithmic processes. So it's important for us to uh, 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 bring these things to the forefront as journalists and as communicators and even as, as uh, people who are using these AI applications about these uh, uh, algorithmic decisions about what does the algorithm, uh, algorithm do. So not, uh, not taking algorithms just as a black box but explaining uh, all these questions about category, what does it do. What, 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 what was its goal? What was it uh, trying to uh, maximize its time on? What, what, what data was the algorithm based on? And is, is this uh, made clear to uh, people who've been using it and people uh, whose data have been used? Is there an oversight by humans to make decisions and tweak the algorithm? So if the algorithm is, is uh, not doing well, so whether there is a, a human element there as well. And uh, as we've explained earlier, whether it's explainable and whether it is interpretable and whether uh, how, how uh, errors are taken care of and all such things. Uh, one of the problems with uh, uh, artificial intelligence is this problem of deep fake where uh, these images or audio files are, are altered with the help of AI uh, applications to dupe an audience into thinking that they're real. So we could be having someone else speaking something else and, and it, it is not even observable and, and people can't, can't even make out what, what uh, reality is. So these problems of deep fake are, 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 are real and uh, we have uh, these open source systems like deep face lab where uh, you can use face swapping for example to uh, make someone else uh, say something which they didn't say in the first place. So uh, there, are, there are lots of these examples. Channel 4 for example created a queen look alike recently to deliver an alternative Christmas message wearing a coronavirus uh, shaped brooch and making jokes about the members of her own family. And Synthesis even released a deep fake Santa that uh, delivered uh, personalized greetings. So uh, this uh, uh, AI uh, in communication is not only just for applications, but also in the theoretical field, uh, there will be a lot more changes because uh, most of our communication theories are about humans as, as subjects, humans as subjects of communication. But when we have AI devices where machine subjects uh, are, are who are doing the communication or, or people are communicating with machines rather than through machines. So that's where a lot of uh, uh, these communication theories will also have to be relooked. Thank you very much for your uh, uh, patience and thank you for joining in.